We are now just days away from WWE Extreme Rules. I'm hyped. I hope you are too. This will be unlike any Extreme Rules event we've seen before. This is the horror show at Extreme Rules. And I'm really hoping for like flashbacks to old horror movies. Huge like epic jump scares and things like that. I think WWE could have some real good fun at this pay-per-view. I like this whole tagline thing and the whole cinematic matches. I think it does distract you from the troublesome times we find ourselves in. I mean, they haven't got an audience. And if you did a pay-per-view the same as Raw or SmackDown, is it going to feel as special? It does then, therefore, add something to the massive pay-per-view. But there are six matches announced for the card. But before we get to that, I need to remind you that on Sunday, minutes after the Extreme Rules event, we will be live on the channel, on YouTube, with the Chill Zone. I don't know how many videos we're going to make. I've got no idea if notifications are going to go out. So make sure you put it in your diaries. You remember, minutes after the show, get your ass to see wrestling's YouTube channel. But let's start with the predictions. We've got, of course, Apollo Crews versus MVP for the United States Championship. This is huge for Apollo. He's on a pay-per-view. And we know that WWE has confirmed on Twitter the winner of the match will walk away with the new United States title, which means that this will be the last time we see the old US Championship, I believe. So it's a historic moment for that reason. I'm very surprised it's not Lashley versus Apollo. And I think for that reason, Apollo's going to retain. I think he's going to take MVP's title, so to speak and have the new United States Championship. I'm fine with it. I think Apollo deserves a push. I think I would like to see Lashley beat Apollo, and maybe we're going to see that at SummerSlam. The SmackDown Women's Championship is on the line as Bailey takes on Nikki Cross. I think this is an easy one. I think Bailey's going to retain. I don't see Nikki Cross beating Bailey for the belt. Not yet. Maybe in the future, but... I don't think her time's now. I think all the focus is on Bailey and Sasha Banks and they've just retained the Raw Women's Championships and stuff. They're across all three brands at the moment. And the thing is, the ratings are good for them. So keep that going. And then we have Oscar defending the Raw Women's title against, again, Sasha Banks. And this one, I think Oscar's going to retain. And I think Bailey is going to accidentally cast Sasha Banks the match. Therefore, Sasha's going to have a reason to be angry at Bailey. The two are going to feud. Maybe go into SummerSlam. We get Bailey versus Sasha for the SmackDown Women's Championship. Now, that would make a lot of sense to me. I think the fact they retain the tag belts means they can still lose the tag belts. One of them could walk away or something. That could potentially happen on the build to SummerSlam. I'm excited for this. I really am. The WWE title is on the line as Drew McIntyre will go one-on-one -on -one with Dolph Ziggler. Again, another match I'm excited for, and we don't know the stipulation. There has been rumours of a TLC match. I think that would work. I think it would play to Dolph Ziggler's strength as his speed and stuff. Um, again, I, I don't never understand why. When you can choose a stipulation for a match, you don't pick where... Drew McIntyre needs to face 20 or 30 people before the match. Then he's handcuffed, blindfolded, legs bound, and that's it. <laughs> like, Dolph would have every opportunity then to win the title. But I don't think he's going to do that. I think he's going to pick a TLC match. I think he's going to pick something like that. And I think it's going to be fine. I think um, the match will be good. Dolph is one of the best sellers in WWE, and Drew's the guy at the moment. So 100%, I think Drew's going to retain. Um, I have heard, seen the rumours they want to take the belt off of Drew so he can like win it back when there's a f audience and stuff. And I'm fine with that. I think that's fine. Um, but I don't think Dolph Ziggler's the guy to do it. So for me, Drew McIntyre for the win. Talking to people making stipulations. Rey Mysterio versus Seth Rollins in an eye for an eye match. The winner must take their opponent's eye out of the socket. Did you ever actually think you'd hear the day? We get a match where you win by taking your opponent's eyeball out. Now, again, this is one of those matches. It's obviously going to have like cinematic effects. They've already confirmed that there's going to be some kind of CGI. 
And I'm fine with that. We know they're not going to really take someone's eyeball out. However, this is something where a casual fan will hear this and go, I want to watch this. I want to see how they're going to do it. I want to see what happens. And the fact it's two huge names like Seth Rollins and Rey Mysterio, the casual audience know who they are and what's going to happen here. Now, I think there's a lot of rumours of Rey Mysterio's possible retirement. So that could be the result of this match. Um, I do think Seth Rollins will win. I think that's very likely, but I do think maybe Dominic Mysterio gets involved. I wonder if he maybe double crosses his dad. That could be very interesting. I think Seth for the win. And then we've got the Wyatt Swamp fight. This is what it's all building to. The Wyatt Swamp. Of course, we got the Eater of Worlds cult leader Bray versus the Black Sheep. Braun Strowman, I'm so into this match. There will 100% be a video on the channel about this match. You guys know it's going to happen. Um, I'm, I'm, I can't wait. There's going to be so many flashbacks to the Wyatt family. There's the big question of will Eric Rowan, now known as Eric Redbeard, show up for this show? Will he like help Wyatt? Will he cast Braun Strowman? Will he help Braun Strowman? All these possibilities. He might not even show up. Will we see The Fiend? I really hope so. I think it's likely we do see The Fiend. Um, will we see the Funhouse Puppets? Again, that's likely. Will there be other members of the Wyatt family that we've never met before? Hell, maybe even Sister Abigail? It's definitely possible. This is huge. This is also a non-title match. And because it's not for the Universal Championship, I do think Bray Wyatt wins. Either Bray Wyatt wins or there's just no ending. Otherwise, it just goes too far. Maybe like an alligator eat bra eats Braun Strowman or something. I, I think that's possible. With these cinematic effects, don't tell me that's silly. There's literally a match on Extreme Rules that's freaking eye for an eye. So an alligator eating someone is more than plausible for this show. <laughs> Again, I want the horror references. I want so much dirt and gore and I want the jump scares and I want Braun Strowman's car to be thrown into the swamp. I want this match to be epic just like the Funhouse match at Wrestlemania and I think it's one of those matches we'll be talking about for years to come but I'm going to put my money on Bray Wyatt. Now Jeff Hardy versus Sheamus in a bar fight everyone thinks it's happening at Extreme Rules I hope it does, but it's not being advertised on WWE.com. They haven't actually said on Twitter it will happen at Extreme Rules. So I don't know if it is happening. If it does happen, I want Jeff Hardy to win. I think Jeff Hardy needs the win in this story, completely needs a win. And then we need to move on from it, 100%. Otherwise, where the hell does it end? Um, it's going on too long, and I agree with that. I don't mind the story. I'm sure Jeff doesn't. We've seen the videos as a chronicle and stuff. So for that reason, I want Jeff Hardy to win. Start moving on to bigger, brighter things. Um, I, I really do hope this match happens. Again, it's not currently on Tuesday being advertised. Now, a lot of people get in touch with me about Alton and Big Show. This is not at Extreme Rules. They literally stood in the ring last night on Raw and said that this would happen next week on Raw in an unsanctioned match, which is kind of strange because that would have the perfect fit on Extreme Rules, the horror show. Um, it's literally a giant versus a viper. You could have had so much fun with this WWE. Now, again, I like the idea of maybe continuing Extreme Rules throughout the week. So maybe we get this match on Raw, then we get the bar fight on SmackDown. Gives you an actual reason to continue to watch Raw and SmackDown as well. That's definitely interesting. The other match I thought might happen at Extreme Rules would be Cesaro and Shinsuke Nakamura versus The New Day for the SmackDown tag belts. Again, this hasn't been announced, um, but it might be on Friday night, so I want to cover it nonetheless. Again, last week we saw Cesaro and Nakamura put The New Day through a table. You don't usually see a table spot unless WWE are planning to set up for a tables match. Again, this could be on SmackDown next week. It's possible. And I, re I really do like the idea of not covering all bases at Extreme Rules. Extreme Rules has got six very good matches confirmed for it. So 
why not spread a few out across Raw and SmackDown and draw the audience to those shows as well? I think it's an interesting way to do it. Um, it's almost like when you split WrestleMania into two, people are going to watch both shows. But if you can say to someone, hey, look, that Jeff Hardy match you was looking forward to is now on SmackDown, I don't think people will be annoyed because they haven't advertised it for Extreme Rules. It just sounds like it's going to be at Extreme Rules because it's a bar fight. There's a lot of criticism as to whether Sheamus is medically cleared, um, whether he got a positive test and things like that. Nobody actually knows. That's all speculation. But I do think Extreme Rules will be a good show nonetheless. I think it's going to be interesting. I think as long as it's done well, again, anything's possible with this event. So that's what I'm looking forward to most is the unpredictability factor. But let me know your thoughts and your predictions in the comment section down below. Like the video, it really does help it rank up on YouTube. Subscribe to the channel if you are new. Make sure you turn on those notifications. You don't wanna miss the Extreme Rules videos. There will be loads of them, I'm sure. Follow me on Twitter at CWrestlingUK. I will see you as always next time.